Enda, uh, thanks a million for uh, meeting me. Thanks for having me. Right, we're going to go for, for a little walk. Cool. Um, the hardest part of the interview is, is this Crossing road. the road. <laughs> so, um, What's the bus? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, let's let's go way back. Start, like, um, bring me back to kind of when your, your career started. Um... Yeah, like the, I suppose the first kitchen job I had was in um, Germany. I'd, I went to Germany when I was 17. Uh, I was following friends of mine, and um, I was uh, at the idea of being a busker. You know, I wanted to okay. play traditional music. I played the baron, and uh, it wasn't like as like it wasn't as lucrative as I expected it to be. So I had to get a job, and I got a job as a kitchen porter right. in a kitchen in the in the Black Forest, and um, <laughs> I really enjoyed. Um, I suppose being part of that kind of um, mechanism or this machine like that uh, okay, yeah. in a kitchen, you know, um, all eyes fixed on one goal sort of thing and everything working very smoothly yeah. and um, it kind of appealed to me so I ended up staying there for about a year and um, I worked up through different sections in the kitchen there and um, then I came back to Ireland and went to university and thought I'd get a real job and yeah. I never did so <laughs> that was my trajectory. Okay. How did the kind of uh, travelling like uh, from being outside of, because I know I, I travel a bit as well from being outside of Ireland looking in um, what, what was your kind of view of, of Irish food did it, did it change your view of Irish food mm, well there was no I wasn't when, when I started cooking I wasn't really interested in um, I suppose the regionality of food or it, it was more okay, I was yeah. interested in technique and I was interested in how uh, different kitchens work and um, you know, it was, a, it was a, there was a different focus for me uh, then, you know, and yeah. I wasn't thinking about what Irish food was. And it was only, I suppose, um, when I seriously decided to sort of stay in Galway, you know, yeah. um, that, and I was, I was working in Nemos at the time, and I was hanging out with the guys in Sheridan's and stuff, and then mm. um, I really started to think about what, uh, what the possibilities are and the shortcomings of what Irish food is or yeah. Irish ingredients, and I suppose, like, what the potential is, you know. So, uh, and I, like, I, don't know, I don't know what year that was, but it was, yeah. it was well after I started cooking. Like, I mean, when I started, it was like, yeah, yeah. what's cool? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and do uh, you think, like, I often look, think about uh, chefs, and I'm one of your young chefs, so I'm still uh, training and all that. Like, the, looking at other chefs and seeing their kind of blueprints about how they went about their career. Yours was very different. Like, you were saying you went to uh, uh, college. You, trained in something else like do you think uh, your kind of way of going about training has helped you now or how, how would you um yeah well i mean it hasn't hindered me anyway so uh i have a degree in english and sociology yeah um which so i suppose if i try to rationalize it it's it get me like a a, a way to structure a rigor for uh research and um okay and, and a, more of an interest in things that are kind of uh, or a way of looking at things that are kind of different than if I went to chef college you know okay, yeah, but everyone yeah, finds their own yeah, way you know yeah um, and uh, so like I suppose um, there'd be lots of kind of young young cooks that would look up to you and would want to be where you are now in, in, in the future what, what advice would you give to a, a young young kid that wants to be in your shoes someday? Um, that, it's just, uh, it's hard work. <laughs> it doesn't, it's, um, there has to be uh, an eye to detail. Um, it's not easy. Uh, it's, if, you're, if your goal is to, you know, win accolades and um, fucking make lots of money, yeah. uh, then you need to shift your focus a little bit. You know, yeah, okay. you need to set your own personal goals and yeah. achieve them rather than looking at someone else's goals okay, or someone yeah. else's achievements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, you'll never be happy then, you know. Right. You, you set your own benchmarks and your own parameters and then um, you work towards that as opposed to looking at what somebody else has and trying to emulate that, you know what I mean? Okay, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And realise that you have to kind of work hard, take knocks, yeah. uh, learn from knocks, you know. Right, um, right. Learn from criticism. Uh, take criticism don't take every bit of criticism seriously take it in context you know yeah. but, but okay. uh, appreciate it like you know yeah so have you had well you've had you, you must have had a fair few kind of setbacks and knocks in your career um, any kind of stand up ones that shaped 
50 an hour. Not, nothing that's worthy of mention, really. Like, mm. um, sure, like, it's, it's like you're gonna try not to focus on things that are yeah, okay, kind of yeah. negative. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but no, there's been no like huge catastrophes. When I left the near, um, there was a bit of a delay when we were opening up Loam and but yeah. I mean like we got there in the end and right, you know okay. it was a bit frustrating. Frustrations. But okay, like yeah. that kind of um, informed what we were gonna become as well, like, you know? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, nothing that's thankfully nothing hugely catastrophic. Yeah. That, um, but I guess that's how you look at it as well, like, you know? Yeah. You don't look at them as a Step potential, yeah. yeah. You know, okay. yeah. when when you left the near, I think um, there was kind of a lot of eyes in the food world, if you will, on you before opening home, and everybody was kind of curious as to what you were going to do. Um, like, what? Because what was the opening like? You know, what what was that whole process like? Because that was that kind of nothing ever came out of that. You know, nobody. Apart from your small group and yourself, I don't think many people would have known what was it like opening Loam or that whole process. Like, how did um, you find the building or did you look anywhere, other locations? We looked at loads of places. Yeah, yeah we were looking for, um, like, it had to be ideal for us. It couldn't just be, um, which way? This way? Yeah. It had to be ideal for, like, a lot of reasons, like, a lot of factors had to be right, you know? Right. The price of the property had to be right. Uh, location, the size, more importantly, had to be right, because a lot of properties in Galway are quite small, the kitchen sizes are quite small, you know? Yeah. Um, so we looked at a lot of different things. Um, old churches, uh, sheds, uh, like, you know, there's yeah. uh, all sorts of things. Um, and then we found the property up in Fairgreen, and it just seemed right, you know? It seemed like a, it ticked a lot of boxes. It's not, I mean, it's ne never gonna take all the boxes, you know? Yeah. But um, it ticked a lot of boxes. And um, yeah. yeah, we had to build it all from scratch. Um, and that process is uh, pretty interesting. Again, there was frustrations there, but um, and it took a lot longer than I had planned because I didn't have any experience and that sort of thing. Yeah. But um, it was uh, it was it was definitely a learning curve. But um, we had people to help us along the way, and you know our architect was really good. One, um, yeah, it was uh, it was interesting, you know. Um, and then the opening, I'd been involved in a lot of openings, like. Okay, from yeah. scratch before you know yeah, okay. so that wasn't new to me but the fact that i was investing all my own money in it yeah. that was new you know okay, so yeah, yeah. but in saying that i mean every business that i was involved with before i treated it like it was my own you know yeah and i was i was uh just invested in it you know yeah so yeah. um but yeah it was um i suppose when you're open something like that and it was like it's a lot of money we invested a lot of money in it um you kind of you have to kind of put it to the back of your mind what the risks are okay. and just kind of go for yeah. it as well yeah. you know so like it had to work right. so if you start putting doubt in there yeah. then um, I don't know I think you're in trouble uh -huh. it depends on your personality as well like, but yeah. you know so, um, this area I often think is the unbelievable area for a restaurant yeah did, did, was this ever a possibility for Loam? Um, yeah we looked at a property down here as well um, but it didn't wasn't right and uh, wasn't available really um, but yeah it was um, this is definitely like it's a it's an up and coming area but like we're yeah. not very far away from like, where we are you know no, so the whole development that's happening up here yeah is close to where we are so I like being on the periphery of it like you know okay yeah. Noma After yeah you went to Noma which, yeah for those who don't know was at the time maybe still is some people would say the best restaurant in the world uh, what was working in Noma like um, it was great. It was um, the I've been following them for a while, you know. Um, I had spotted them on the, the 50 best list, and I think they were like they were okay. 20 or something like that. Really? But it seemed like it. it they're kind of like their approach and their ethos really appealed to me, you know. Yeah. Um, they were inward looking, you know. Um, their dishes looked like just completely nothing I'd ever seen before. They were yeah. very natural. Yeah. Um, like it was less, even less formulaic and like, um, and like more pared back than even Michelle Brand and stuff like that, you know? Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. The really young team. Um, yeah, and like when I went to work there, um, like the way they worked was kind of, 
is ad hoc and it's all over the place because the way the suppliers were, you know. Yeah. But like the food, the, yeah. the the way the restaurant worked was amazing. You know, it was like really Danish laid back, but it was really organised in its disorganisation. You know, <laughs> and that really appealed to me. You know, yeah. that there was this kind of like order and eye to detail amidst this kind of chaos that was happening yeah. as well. Like you know, but it wasn't chaos. It was like organised chaos. Exactly. Yeah. But it, like it was. Yeah. It was. It was great. And like the fact that it, it worked like a there was. A, Everyone had a common goal, you know. It wasn't just like this kind of hierarchy and you have to do this and you have to do this. There was a common goal towards this thing that everyone felt like they were doing something really good, you know. Right, everyone yeah. felt like they were doing something um, that was changing the mindset of, uh, yeah, okay. the, of cuisine, you know. Yeah, yeah, Which yeah. they were, Which you know. Did, yeah. um, that's what I found really enjoyable. Wow, this is something else down here, no? Yeah. So you, you've been in Galway um, what does Galway food mean to you? Because you've been here for quite a long time, and you would have seen, you would have seen a real evolution of, of Galway food over the years. Yeah. Um. I guess Galway. I, I was going to say like there's no such thing as Galway food, but I guess it's got like, it's got a certain style though, isn't it? It's very laid back. Like yeah, we course. couldn't get away with like a, a patch of gibos here. Yeah. With a yeah. with like really polished table service, it has to be yeah. kind of more laid back, more uh, convivial. You have to be able to turn up in a pair of shorts and yeah. tongs. So that's more about what Galway is. It's more about Galway hospitality rather than Galway food, isn't it? Okay. Yeah. Um, like it's it's great. We have got good ingredients here, but they're the same thing. It's a small island. You know, there's no point in trying to regionalize it. Like you know, because yeah. it is. Yeah. It's small. Everything's accessible from every other yeah. part of the island. Yeah. Um, we're we're on the coast. Um, and we're right beside, like you know. Uh, East Galway, which is like really lush farmland, yeah. and woodland and stuff like that. Yeah. So we're very everything is very accessible, like here. Mm. That's that can be all Galway, you know. Yeah. But um, and the quality of food is here. It's great, like you know. But as with regards to style, I don't think there's any particular style okay. here yeah. uh, that is um, definitively Galway, you know. Right. But it's it's more about the the feeling when you go to into restaurants in Galway. It's very you know you're in Galway, yeah, like you know. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, that does. Yeah. yeah. But um, you you have a Michelin star restaurant. Yeah. And how does that sit in, in Galway? Um, well, I mean, obviously there was a, there was um, a niche, so and we fitted into that okay. niche. So um, it's we're, we're you can say like we're a Michelin inside restaurant, you know, yeah. but we are just a restaurant that serves a particular type of food. Okay. It's we're not like it's hard to be defined by some external. Uh, force, yeah. you know, yeah. and it says that because it, it doesn't mean that we're in a category, like you know, yeah. we're not in like a this mission star category, so we're this sort of thing. Yeah. We are yeah. our own thing, yeah. you know, yeah. that uh, we and we have an accolade that Michelin has given us, right. like you know. Okay. So I don't know. This kind of this is a Michelin star restaurant, so it has to be this thing. Yeah. We're still like a very kind of relaxed, convivial restaurant right. that isn't taking itself too seriously as well, like you know, okay. but it's doing things that set our own parameters and yeah. you know. And what, what's uh, what like what do you, what are your views on Michelin? Um, it's the uh, mission is great. Um, you know, I'm sure like it has faults. You know, um, like maybe the, the partners it picks aren't the best. Like you know, what do you mean? Well, I mean it's got like sponsors like Nestle and stuff like that that haven't oh, okay. got the greatest track record in the world. Like, okay. but um, like or for us, it's been great. Like I mean, where we are, um, we wouldn't have had the traffic of the football without gaining a star. You know, um, yeah. The uh, I mean, if you get like. So imagine a world where Michelin didn't exist anymore. Yeah. What's going to fill the void? You know, yeah, it's not the least, yeah. and it's not the fifty best. Yeah. It's um, to like it's like you don't know what what it takes to gain a star. What, what they, they're quite secretive about. Yeah. What what it is, but that's what they're supposed to do. Like you know, yeah. they're not going to tell you what you're supposed to do to gain yeah, a star yeah, yeah. and then charge you money for it. Right. It doesn't cost you anything. Like you know, they come around, yeah. and if you're good, they put you in the book, and yeah. if you're not, you won't even know they're there. You know. Yeah. So. What's better than that? Okay. And do you think overall it's had a positive or a negative effect? Cause like, maybe, do you kind of get the feel that maybe might, some people might say, oh, I won't go to, to Loam or not, you know, this restaurant because it's mission has started and it has this kind of feeling that it's fancy or it's posh or it's too expensive. But sure, they're never going to come anyway, you know? Okay, right. Like, at the, at the end of the day, like, yeah. uh, they're not going to, even if it didn't have a mission to start, they had this like expectation that it's going to be posh and fancy. They're just going to go, I'm not going there. Right, okay. Or I'll go there and I'll fucking try my best to have a bad time, you know? <laughs> so, so what can you do? Yeah. You can only like try and convince people that they're going to have a good time once they're in the door. You can't drag yeah. people in your door, you know? Right.
and that's like I suppose that's our biggest challenge you know it's um because it's, it's quite an effort to get up to Fairgreen for, yeah. for like it's out of the way you know okay. uh, it's not a traditional place where you go for a meal and if people make that effort to go up there they have to be like embraced as soon as they come in the door and feel like they're welcome and yeah. it's worth the effort and uh, okay. it's great we're here now and you know yeah. so I mean that's always our challenge and we get people in make sure that they have a good time mm. and then they go away and find other people and bring them up right, as well okay. like so and I suppose like our location isn't it, uh, like on the face of it it doesn't seem great you know but yeah. We're between two big busy hotels, you know. Yeah, okay. We're beside Air Square. Yeah. It's kind of, and also, I feel it's kind of off the beaten track. People feel like they're making like a going on an adventure, okay, you know. Fair enough, yeah. Special kind of occasion. Yeah, and they're kind of leaving town a little bit, you know. Yeah. That uh, that I believe the the definition for two Michelin star restaurant in the Michelin Guide is it's worth a detour. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, is that like? Do you think, are you worth a detour? Or is, is, do you want to become worth a detour? Um, like I was saying earlier on, like he's giving advice for uh, like young chefs. Yeah. So like, don't you're not aiming towards accolades, you know? Right. Okay. Um, you kind of, and again, it's not like a, a flippant or a glib uh, deflect of your question, but like I firmly believe this, you know. Right, you have okay. to set your own level of excellence. Yeah. And go for that. Okay. And if you, if that seems too achievable, then maybe you're aiming your bar too low. You know, right. okay. maybe try a little bit harder. Okay. Um, so would you like two Michelin stars? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, if it happens, it happens. But I mean, okay. you're not in control of it, like. Right. Okay. Well, you're not really. You can try your best to do what you think is the best thing, yeah. or you can try and do what this your imaginary guidelines are. You know, which you have no you have no idea what they are. You know, so yeah. okay. probably the easier thing to do yeah. to do what you think is great or to second guess somebody that you don't yeah. even know. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Where I would have heard the first time I really took an interest in your career was in an ear. How was that? Like you won a Michelin star. Uh, how was that? How was the whole an ear experience? Um, yeah, it was great. Um, again, like we set it up from the from the beginning, like you know, yeah. uh, we built a restaurant uh, with JP, and um, it was. Like a really small team at the beginning. Mm. Um, it was a tiny little restaurant. It had uh, there's loads of limitations of what we could do, you know. But um, we stretched it as far as we could, like you know. Okay. Um, and um, yeah, when we won the start, it was like incredible. It was great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there was uh, and then like it became a busy and profitable restaurant after that. So <laughs> well, it was pretty busy. It was busy like. I guess when you were working there, it was you just it was a year into having a star, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and um, pretty busy with Ulton, and you know, yeah, it was a, it was a, like it was a good experience overall. Because I, I kind of agreed to stay there for two years, and I stayed there for two years. And um, what was it like uh, winning the star in an ear, and then winning the star in Loam? Was there was there any difference in the feeling of it or? Um, when we won the start in the year, um, it was kind of out of the blue. I didn't expect it was going to happen. Like, because we were only open 13 months or something like that. Yeah. Um, so it kind of like, yeah, it was completely out of the blue. I felt, uh, but it was great. It was um, no idea it was coming. It fucking it just blew our minds, like you know. Yeah. Um, but it was great. It's amazing. Uh, for Loam, we kind of went into it feeling that we could achieve that, you know. Uh, okay. But it would have taken us a few years, I thought, you know. Right. Uh, when we got it after 10 months, wow. um, it was... Yeah, we were really... I remember the day that we found out. Um, the day we found out in the near, it was a leak, you know. It was just like... Yeah, okay, yeah. Um, but, like, the day we found out uh, for Loam, it was like they were tweeting stars, you know. And we are waiting all day to yeah, see yeah, the streets yeah. coming through, so who, yeah. who won a star or whatever. Yeah. And uh, the Greenhouse won it that year as well. And, and then our name came up second, I think, in the stars. Um, yeah, it was, uh, exhilarating. So exhilarating, wow. Connor fell in the bin, <laughs> jumping up and down. It's great. Wow. And how did how did the near? Like, do you remember where you were when you found out you wanted a Michelin star? And yeah, I do. Yeah. Uh, my mum and dad were staying down in the Salt Hill Hotel, and um, I was looking at. Uh, my mum was talking to me, but I was looking at Twitter. I should have been oh, listening to my mum. Yeah. But um. Uh, yeah, I noticed there was a, there was a leak. Went on the site. Wow. Uh, I saw the I saw the listing with a little star beside it, a little macaron. Yeah. Um, I rang Connor. I got Connor to look it up on a proper computer on yeah, a big yeah. screen. And I said, "What is that? Is that what I think it is?" He's like, "I fucking think it is." <laughs> and um, 
I said, I'll meet you in work in 20 minutes. Okay. And then we went in and then we like, found out that we had a wow. start. That's amazing. Yeah. Because now, nowadays... But we didn't know for certain because it was taken down straight away after that. Oh, really? So we went through the whole day wow. waiting to find out if it was real or not, that you know? That was awful. Uh, yeah, it was interesting. Like, I mean... <laughs> Your food's often described as modern Irish cuisine. Well, what do you think of that tag? Um, I guess um, that's been described as something, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, like since uh, since I've started cooking, it's been this kind of like uh, it's been bandied about this kind of modern Irish cuisine, like yeah. from um, like Conor Gallagher's food is supposed to be modern. Cuisine. Really, yeah? Well, yeah, that's what it was. Like, I think his first book was called Modern Irish Cuisine or something oh, like that. Okay. Um, but um, that was just like an interpretation of like American cuisine at the time. Yeah. That was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, my food is, I suppose, uh, I'd say previously it had Nordic influences, but mm. we're kind of finding our own ground now that yeah. it's, okay. it's becoming more personal and more mature and it's finding its own. Uh, voice in a way yeah, right. but by no means is it like hey is it like a a definition of modern Irish cuisine I don't think I don't think there is such a thing right um, so uh, what's the the three and a half years open what's what's the future of Loam like say say we're walking here in five years time where, where would you like to be with Loam um, well I mean like so like we're, we can only work from year to year, you know. Yeah. Uh, and like our trajectory is like we're like we're getting busier. We kind of like I, you were saying, I, I, like I, uh, we changed the structure I, of uh, our offering, like you know. Yeah. And we're definitely like we're not going to go like above having a nine course offering because I mean anything above that is like it's too much. I think it's too much okay. food. Uh, we're not that sort of restaurant. Um, um, I'm kind of like I'm quite happy with where we are at the moment, like you know. Yeah. Um, hopefully we can stay on this kind of level. Um, yeah. I, we're gonna kind of slowly. We're, we're like, over the last few years, we've just slowly built on what we've done already. Like you know, yeah. we try not to repeat ourselves too much. Yeah. Um, we kind of work with our suppliers, you know, who yeah. like, we work very closely. But we're very lucky to have yeah. um, on um, improving what we get off them already, uh, maintaining the quality of the things that we're like we're really happy with, and then trying out like, new things with them. Like you know, yeah. uh, within vegetables and stuff like that. Yeah. Seeing what grows out in Loch Ray or um, like with the with the meat, maybe like. I'd like to be able to age our own meat in the restaurant properly, like you know. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, just like little things like this, like the like the people that are out in Boffin, you know. Mm. The guy that's doing the Iki Jimmy uh, Pollock. Okay, yeah. You heard about this guy? Yeah, yeah, I'm really excited about, about this, like you know. Yeah. It's just little things like this, you know, yeah. like the produce that is like, you know, treated really well and uh, like arriving into the restaurant the way it should do, you know. Yeah. Like, kind of working on things like that. Yeah. Um, but like slow, little, small. Little baby steps yeah. to excellence, you know. That's <laughs> wow. uh, that's our that's our uh, game. Like, Perfect. we're not going to take over the world, like, but yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Perfect. All right, Enda, thanks a million. Thanks uh, very much. I could talk to you all day. I've only like touched the surface, so hopefully we can do uh, we can do a uh, part two at some stage. In yeah, the future. absolutely, absolutely. Right. It was a pleasure. Thanks, thanks very much. Guys. Boom. Right.